So what inspired you guys to uh, make um, Hemlock Grove? Um, well, Hemlock Grove was actually brought to me by our other executive producer, Eric Newman, uh, who I produced Last Exorcism with and Man with the Iron Fist. And he read the book, and he was like, this, this would make an amazing television show. Mm -hmm. And I read the manuscript, and we met with Brian, <laughs> Um, and talked to Netflix, and it turned out that Netflix had actually, I was on their radar that they had flagged for someone that they wanted to get into original programming with, because they were looking for, you know, they had Genji Cohen, um, Orange to the New Black, they had David Fincher, and they were looking for something in the, in the horror space. So it just was a great confluence of, um, of events and timing, and we, we brought it to Netflix, we told them the whole story, they loved it, and then right away we started putting together our team, and, you know, and the first people we went to, was Darren Serafian, who is, Darren has so much experience um, in television and directing features, but also, Darren also has a horror side to him that very few people know about, and that he cut his teeth very early on working under Lucio Fulci and Dario Argento in Italian horror and shooting second unit for those guys and actually acting in Fulci's movies. So it's like this other side of him that I think was waiting to burst out. You know, I, 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 I went to Italy to, to, to meet Dario Argento and actually in Fellini, Federico Fellini, and got to meet, meet them and get to work with those guys. And it was a great experience because big, like, like Eli, and that's, he and I got together, we instantly clicked because we, we both loved the same films. We'd bring up films and these little tiny moments in films that no one really knows about. We totally connected. And it really... Even our Hal Ashby movies. We were like, we should oh, yeah. shoot this to look like a weird, <laughs> demented hat. Like, like Hal Absolutely. Ashby was also a huge influence, on, oddly, yeah. for both of us. Yes, yes. And uh, and so we connected. It was really, really interesting. And I've, and I've been, you know, I've been a huge fan of his. I don't know if it got to you that I was a fan of yours or not, but I have been. And, uh, <laughs> and so we, we started working together. And like, for instance, working on the transformation. Uh, him and I, just, Eli, Eli and I just talking at dinners and, and you know, anywhere we could about this transformation that was really took a lot of, we didn't want it to be the same transformation that we've seen in everything. We wanted it to be reminiscent. We wanted to feel the nostalgia of transformations. But we, we wanted, wanted to do our own. We, we were wanted obsessed to do with our making own. our own mark on a transformation. It's and not going to take place <laughs> under the full moon. <laughs> no, we, we wanted it to feel violent. We wanted to do, we're like, okay, look at the, there's the Twilight Fluffy transformations, there's the Rick Baker transformation, there's the Rob Bottin transformation. We want this to be in the tradition where it feels real, it feels visceral, violent, but also has our own unique twist on it. And you combines all techniques, practical makeup, CG, real wolves, like everything. Um, Darren just, it was, you know, you oversaw that and broke it down for the whole thing. It was really We have any days to shoot amazing. these shows in, just like a typical TV series. And mm -hmm. so our, our, our thing is we're not going to be able to film this you know, to get what, what Eli, Eli wanted, and, and, and what we talked about. And what you want, what we with, all which, which There was no way we could do it uh, in that. We'd have to use the whole eight days just to get all the little pieces and moments in the, in the, the, right, the right moments and the right flares and everything that we needed. So what we did is we decided, okay, we threw our hands up and go, we will do it throughout the series. We worked on that transformation up until episode probably 10. It was finally finished. And if something didn't work, we threw it out. If something wasn't right, we threw it out. We brought real wolves in later to, to, to deal with and uh, to shoot. And then CG on top of that to make them look more, to make the real wolf look, the wolf look more dangerous. But that's that whole scene. There's two wolves in that sequence. Real, real wolves. And it was, and that was one of the great things about having someone like Darren, who's obviously as into it creatively as are. But Darren has such an amazing, incredible breadth of experience from all the episodes of House and all his years of like so much directing under his belt that when we sat down and we go. Basically, we go. This he is why I want to do the show. Yeah, like, <laughs> like how are we going to do this? Darren, Darren really figured out an amazing plan of attack. And by the way, that's the, also the transformation goes for goes for Shelley, goes for all the other creatures. The you know the vampires, any of the bleeding, any of the kill scenes, any of the violence, like all the stuff that we, we love and wanted to have in the show. Darren really just found an amazing way to make sure it all got done well, here's right. Here's the thing: when we started, we started this project. Eli and I, Eli and I sat down and started working on this. He goes, I don't want to look at a rock and say that's a rock and film it. I want to know what's underneath it. Show me what's underneath that rock. And that became our philosophy for the whole shoot. What's underneath the rock? Let's just don't film a rock. And so what we did is we went for the, for the underbelly, for the, that, that very, very, uh, as I say, that very thin line between the yin and the yang. What is that? What is that? It goes from good and bad. And that's what we did.
Now, why did you choose Netflix as the uh, as, rather than like a cable show? Or well, Netflix <clears throat> came in with a very big commitment to go right to series. Um, so that was it was kind of a no brainer. You know, most anywhere else you do a pilot. Um, but Netflix, you know, they'd ordered 26 episodes of House of Cards, and they said, we'll do 13 right away. And we wanted someone that was bold and that believed in the project and believed in us and knew what we, you know, that, that was totally on board with letting us just move forward with it. You know, we didn't, we didn't want to be in a situation where we do one episode, and then there's a whole long discussion of maybe change this or change that. We're like, no, this is the show we're making. We told them very clearly, and they said, great. You know, the great it. thing about Netflix, here's the, one, another great thing about it is that we have a, we have a team of people that we're working with. There's Peter Friedlander, and, and, and who, was our, who we dealt with mainly on, on, on the show. He's like, make your show. Make sure it doesn't look like the other shows out there, but make your show. And we would turn stuff in, and the more that we twisted, the more that we'd go and try to do something different, the more that we champion us. So it encourage us. And you'll see throughout the episodes, one and two are pretty, you know, they're right, they kind of do, they're right there. He sets up the whole sort of sick, twisted Lynchian sort of thing. Uh, Rothian sort of thing to the thing because this is a Seraphian s- sort of thing. A sick motherfucker. Okay, right now. He looks all nice and like the, the nice all. guy next door. He's scared. He frightens me. So, <laughs> so Netflix is not putting like a like a lead, like telling you um, you can't do this, you can't do no. that. Are they giving you free well, reign like uh, like cable networks are giving? It's, you, like, it's basically the cable. Yeah, it's like the same level of cable as, as most of the other. You're not going to see graphic sexuality on Netflix um, and some violence, but it's it's basically the limits of what's what their standards are on Netflix. But we also love the idea that everyone would see every episode at once. You know, we're not... It it changed the way we could write and structure the episodes. Knowing from the beginning this is going to be seen as really like a 13-hour movie, suddenly we're like, we're not worried about like wrapping up this thing and getting in a cliffhanger and then introducing and hoping to come back next week. It's like, we're doing a murder mystery. We can slowly plant seeds that you pay off six episodes later. And also... You know, you you figure things out as you go along. You know, by episode seven, you're going to really know things about certain characters, so the way certain things work. And if something in my episode of the first episode wasn't done exactly, like we could have done that better, you have a chance to go back and do that better. You know, so it's really a great, it was a great collaborative effort because you could really kind of tweak, like the transformation, you can sort of tweak your episodes right up until they air. You know, the challenge, the challenge in episode one was really getting to know who all these characters are, and they're very dark and twisted, and it was like. And, and I think Eli brilliantly, because I've worked on a lot of pilots, directed pilots before, but Eli took these characters, and what he did is he found nuances in these characters and these sort of dualities of who these people are, and he really brought it out in that, in that, in that pilot. And again, set up a, te- a, re- a, a, a fertile ground for us to do the rest of the series. It's yeah. Really, really amazing. It was, a, it was a great, it was a great, the whole thing was a great experience. It was a really good, you know, Brian McGreevy created such an incredible, rich world, and the actors that we worked with from Bill Skarsgård and Landon Liberon and Famke and Dugre, they, they really went for it. Everybody brought such originality. Everybody, you know, a lot of people, they're all coming from, you know, movie world. Everyone's coming in, or the theater world. Or the, everyone's coming in and bringing something incredible to the characters. We all really looked at this like a 13-hour movie and not just some television. What's interesting, though, is like some of the things that were asked of them that, that in the pilot, it's like, really? Okay, you know. We have, a, we have a show about rape and incest and, and, and murder and all this debauchery, and it's like, okay, and by the end of it, where's the rape? <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's... It's, it's, it's coming soon. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, how are you going to keep your uh, fans connected now that it's all offered, all 13 episodes? Well, I think what's great about it is that you have... I mean, first, it's, you know, people can go immediately talking online about it. You can see that happening with House of Cards right away. But what's great about Netflix is it knows your viewing habits, and anyone who watches the show, they're going to link to Darren's movies, they're going to link to my movies, they're going to link to Fomka's movies, they're going to link to Lily Taylor's movies. So people that are into Hemlock Grove might be like, oh, what is Bill Skarsgård done? What is, okay, let's see, who this, who's Penelope Mitchell? Can I watch her other films? So I think that by the end, you can watch the show 
and then you go back and suddenly, yeah. literally right there at your fingertips, you can familiar, you, there's someone you like, you can watch, just hyperlink and watch all their movies or television shows are right there for you. So it's suddenly, by the time you go back for season two or you watch it again, you have a whole new appreciation because you've gotten to see everyone else's work. I think there's no other television experience like that. Even if it's a, a regular cable show, you know, if you want to watch, like, Game of Thrones, I'm obsessed with I love it. But, like, I'll go on IMDb, everybody, and look for Amelia Clark's other movies. Like, I have to manually hunt down every cast member to watch their other films. But right here with Netflix, as soon as the show ends or as soon as the episode ends, if you want more, you can go back and see what everyone's done previously. I mean, the, su the success of House of Cards was exactly what they thought it would be. Just like what Eli just said. One person watched it, forks off into two. It's almost like this, like, tree of branches that keep branching out. And soon it kind of just, like... There's so many just, just <clears throat> branches that go out, so many ways to watch the show. And that was why um, they were like big smiles on their face. It works. Yeah. It works for them. And, and we are next, and we're so excited about that. Yeah, it was great. And because also, what's nice is that they're there. Like, if, if you, you know, people say, oh, Breaking Bad, it's like, okay, I got to get the DVDs or the wire, you know, you'd have to wait. But now, the show is there and it exists, so anyone who hears it, they just, okay, let's just watch them all. They just push a button. It's. I think when I first heard about the idea, because I've so been in conventional television, I, I like the water cooler idea, talking about the idea, and then next week it comes out. And I was like, going, okay, let's see what happens here. But now, um, talking to friends and people that are going, yes, I want to see them all. Like, for instance, you, you remember years ago, Roots, maybe before you guys' time, but my time, Roots was almost like a binge watching. All the shows were all at once all throughout the week, and it was a huge hit, and I think part of the reason it was a huge hit is because people got to watch it right away, and they didn't get cooled off watching another show, Breaking Bad, to get in the middle of it. Um, so.